Hey everyone, it's Mark with Mark's Virtual Real Estate Channel, doing another quick Upland video here. Well, maybe not so quick, we'll see how it goes. Um, this morning, they released uh, the stress test for Las Vegas, so I bought some properties there. You can see them right here. Um, minted some properties and bought some more in the secondary market. Sold a few, made some money, not a ton, but it's been okay. We'll see how it goes. There's still another two, three days before all of Las Vegas is released, so we'll see what happens in the meantime. And along with this, they're starting to the Thrifty Trader Challenge, and that's where you can buy properties, sell them, make a profit, hopefully get on the leaderboard, maybe get a Block Explorer if you do really well, possibly get Spark, Upix as well. So I'm going to go through one way I'm going to figure out how to figure out what properties I should sell and maybe what properties I should have sold already but haven't sold <laughs> and I'll show you how to do that and um, we'll also go through some other things here as well maybe check on the lazy nodes as well and our progress there all right we love the likes love the shares love the comments keep those coming I have my real real estate channel as well Mark Ferguson invest for more if you want to see our flips rentals all that cool stuff buying a 13,000 square foot industrial property next week which probably will have a ton of stuff on it so it'll be interesting to see how much stuff they leave me there Okay, so I am in Las Vegas, and I minted some properties in the country club, sold them, made a decent profit. I think I minted them for fifteen to 17000 sold them for 39000 not bad. And But something that was surprised me was after that mint, there were properties in here for sale for 20000 on the golf course. And I thought that was really low, and so I bought some of those, actually sold them, then bought some more. And you can see I have the lowest price for sale here, kind of in the whole golf course area, thirty four nine. And so I'm just going to leave that for sale for a while and see what happens. But there seems like there's a lot of opportunity around there to make some money, even if you couldn't mint stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Some other stuff over here. I've minted a bunch over here and sold a couple. Uh, but there haven't been crazy high markups yet. I think I bought this for what? Or minted it for 18 Have it for 23.9. So making a little bit here and there. We can look at my messages and see. I sold one of them on... Boise for 22.9, so made a little bit there. Um, another one on Liberty for 23.9, made a little bit there. Bel Air for 37.9, made more there. Um, Pinehurst, I sold that before prices went up, right? I should have kept that one. <laughs> um, and I sold a couple more for 39.9 that I minted that were pretty good um, deals there. So those are the properties I have there, but the Thrifty Trader Challenge, I have a hard time saying that, should work for any property you have. And if we go here and kind of see the leaderboard and I'm not on the leaderboard yet I haven't done a whole lot yet but let's see if uh, oh oh here we go um, all right so it starts today at 10 a.m. you can enter to enter ugh, boy you can play to try and win get entered for their Genesis car um, a Genesis trader block Explorer and it's based off relative profit score, um, which is the relative value between the sale price and 30-day moving of average sales prices in that property's neighborhood. Relative purchase score calculates the relative value between the purchase price and the 30-day moving average of sales in that property's neighborhood. So basically it's saying, are you buying good deals? Are you selling good deals? So part of this is the buy too, I think. In trading volume, volume of trades executed during the weekend, okay. Trading diversity, number of unique players the seller has traded with. So there's all kinds of different ways to get on that leaderboard. And if you're in the top 200, you get a Block Explorer. And um, this shows 2,500 Upix, the top 100. Get Spark too. okay, here we go. And so... I've done pretty well in these. Um, I've been in the top 50, I think, in both of them that I did in LA and Detroit. So um, hopefully I can do well in this one too. But how am I going to figure out what to, oh, my daily check-in. By the way, I've only gotten 0 .01 spark for the four or five times I've gotten spark for that. I know other people have gotten more. I have not, so that's okay. <laughs> um, What I want to do is I'm going to go to upxlend.me, where I normally go. And is my face in the way? I don't, maybe not. I've been moving my face around on the screen. I'm going to type in my player name. And what that does, again, upxlend.me, it shows my net worth, which has increased about 100,000 upx since the stress test, so that's good. My yield, 
all kinds of other stuff, all my properties. And here, I have all my properties listed. I have 396 properties. So I can also see if they're for sale or not. And um, what I bought them for and what I minted them for. So this is a really easy way to see, right, if maybe I should be selling some of these properties that I have had for a while. So we can kind of go by mint price, last price, um, all types of ways to uh, figure out how to do this. And this is one I got, um, oh yeah, see, I should have that one sold. And you used to be able to click on this, but that, I'm gonna see if this does a weird thing. I did this before and it took me to the property and then it like said I sold it and was being really weird. So it shows that I own it, but that's me who, see it's being weird again. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to go back. Um, I'm probably just going to have to copy and paste. So I won't do this for every single property because this video might take a while. I'll just do it for some. So I actually got this property in trade um, from our Discord. We have a Discord, kind of the lazy no Discord. And I trade one of my deposit properties for this property and another property. And so um, even though I paid very little for it, um, just because it was I traded the other I traded two for one I got two properties for one so that's why that happened so I looked at prices in this area before and I believe they were around 15,000 13,000 for 71 for okay let's see how big is mine this kind of shows you how I price 104 so I'm gonna sell it for 14.9 and see what happens so I'll list that for sale and then um this is just a quick and not quick, but somewhat easier way to go through your properties, see what you have, you know, that you should be listing or selling. Like I have some stuff in Queens that I minted for 4,400, 4,600 that I don't have for sale yet. So um, those are ones I definitely could sell and it's not going to be a huge profit, right? It's not going to be like 200% profit probably, but I definitely can sell those for more than I bought them for or minted them for because the floor in Queens is much higher than that. And um, let's see, we'll, we'll zoom out a bunch here. This is just my quick and easy way of, of seeing what prices are. I could also go to upxland.me, put in Queens for the neighborhood, see what the prices are there, or we just wait for the circle of death, which we didn't have earlier today, amazing. All the other releases, we've had the circle of death. Um, fitting that we have it now when there's not a release. And I don't, can I open two up X lens? dot me's and mess things up because <laughs> it might be faster to just do this and see what the sale price is here this is all of queens the cheapest stuff is 49.40 they're minted for that so um in mass path that's a weird sounding neighborhood oh no properties for sale in that whole area sure elmhurst so why don't we just type in elmhurst and see what Oh, I'm at the wrong one. Here's the right one. I, I do my best to confuse myself as much as I possibly can. Let's see what the floor is in Elmhurst. 5,000 for 40. So, you know, like I said, I'm not going to make a whole lot of profit on these, but selling them, um, you know, making some profit. Whoops, that'll make me a lot of profit. Will still help me out on my score. It should help the thrifty trader challenge. I'd really like to get some big profiting properties, but again, um, you know, I didn't mint any crazy awesome ones today. It was mostly just, you know, country club stuff, no named properties, nothing like that. But there are a lot of people who weren't able to mint anything. So I should be thankful for that. So I've got a couple of properties here. Let's see if the, the sale thing is working yet. Boy, it's still being weird. Okay. So that was ozone park. Let's see what some of the prices in Ozone Park are and just do this. I'm like I said, I'm doing a few here. I'm not going to do all of them again, about 5,000. So these aren't crazy expensive properties, but you know, if I put it like 5290 and I put this one, that was a bigger one, or maybe I bought that one for that much. I don't like to lose money, so <laughs> I uh, 
very rarely will sell a property for less than I buy it for. Once in a while, but it's pretty rare. So um, I, a lot of ones I'll just keep. If I have to sell them for a lot less than I bought them for, I'll just end up keeping them. Grass shields. Oh, that's, oh, that's my gas station. See, okay. This is one. Do I want to sell my gas station? I like my gas station. But it's one I can make a real big profit on. And it might get me up that list a bunch, you know, if I were to sell my gas station because I minted for so little. And there's my Marathon gas station. I've got it for sale for 199 which is way too much. That's why it hasn't sold. Named properties on Grashit, grass whatever. Um, they range from, you know, it's hard to say. I wish there was a named property. I minted that one. I did so well in Detroit. It was amazing. <laughs> um, I got so many named properties and made so much money there. It was just crazy. I think it was because there were so many issues with lag and other people were having problems and mine was working somewhat okay that it ended up being okay. So really, I mean, I think I minted this giant one too. Oh, I had Church's Chicken. You remember that? It's for 95000 I think I have a named property on here too somewhere so i'm really i need to be like ninety nine thousand, i think to have a good chance of selling it <sighs> but do i want to let go of it for that maybe i'll do this i mean still be a good profit everybody likes gas stations in upland they don't really do anything yet they don't have no utility but they might in the future so there you go if someone wants to buy my my gas station you can i think i have some other ones here as well that um what did I buy these for? Forty five. See, I could you know I can still sell that and make a profit here too. We'll do that. And really if I sell these two, it also gives me more money for the Las Vegas release or the uh you know the node, lazy node. <laughs> um, buying more properties there. Oh yeah, I bought this one a little while ago. CJ King of Car Loans. Because it was a named property I got pretty cheap. So we'll lower the price on that one too. Just because we haven't had much action on it. And again, I don't mind keeping those properties either because I think Gracias is a collection and uh, I think we'll have you know long-term value as well. But just moving along here. More Ozone Park stuff. Look at all that stuff I have in Queens. It's not for sale in these different neighborhoods that I minted cheaply. But, again, they're not, like, way below the floor. So I could go through and list all of these for sale. Um, but oh, there's a Henry Ford one. I bought a Henry Ford one for fifty nine ninety. That's crazy. <laughs> See, I could trade someone. All right, there we go. Someone wants to trade with me my Henry Ford property for something worth about 20 some thousand, maybe a little more than 20,000. I'll definitely trade that if you want to get into the Henry Ford node. Let me know. I might um mention that too cuz that um that could be a good deal. That could help me out in a thrifty trader cuz I've got a low value. And um, someone could get a Henry Ford property. I keep buying Henry Ford stuff all the time. It's not going to run out anytime soon. So um, that's a possibility. And if trading is, you know, looked upon on the Thrifty Challenge this time, um, I have been doing quite a bit of trading way before the Thrifty Challenge too. I've been doing more trading with people on the Discord um, who want to get into Henry Ford, who want to get into Naponset. So I, I could definitely help some people out there. Um, that's a good idea. Look at me thinking... And there's one in Springwell. That's a collection. That might be uh, one I could uh, definitely change the price on. So that's kind of one way to go through. See what you have. See what's not for sale. Um, if you have stuff in collections, right, that's more easier to sell, easier to get rid of. And there's a lot of stuff I have on here where I could go through and list it for sale and probably do a lot better in the Thrifty Challenge than um, if it wasn't not for sale, if that makes sense. So... Don't want to go through all of them. I don't want to waste all your time doing this, but this is one way to go through. And even looking at the ones you do have for sale, you know, seeing how much room you have, if you have a bunch of room on some of them that aren't selling or um, 
you know, I don't think selling for a loss helps out too much. Um, oh, there's one on Rockaway Beach that um, really should have sold before, you know, the collections were announced. I always talk about that because I could have sold it probably for 50,000 epics and now it's at 29.9 and not selling. Um, but there's a, yeah, there's some stuff here where I definitely can make some profit, get some stuff listed, have more money for the release and possibly do better in the thrifty challenge. So it is the next day I've sold some properties and I want to see if my ranking improved very much. So I have not looked at the rankings yet for thrifty trader. I do have 849,000 upex now. And, um, yesterday when I did this video, I was below 700,000. So I've sold a lot. I sold one of my Riverdale properties for over a hundred thousand. And then I can just show you actually on my messages here. Um, sold one in Detroit. I think that was in a collection Springwell. Um, my cheapest Queens mint I had, uh, oh, oh, I did a trade in my, um, Upland node on discord. Sold another Detroit one, another Detroit one. There's my big one. I bought that one for 85,000, sold it for 1099. So that's pretty good profit. Uh, this is the Las Vegas one, Las Vegas one. I think I showed these yesterday. So you can see I have sold properties, but they aren't huge profit properties. So I don't know how much that helps me because I feel like my score, if we go here, um, is this my score from yesterday? Yes. Well, this is before I did the video yesterday. Maybe it's right when I was doing the video. Um, 66.88. Uh, my volume is good. My diversity is good. Relative buy and relative profit are both very low. So let's see if that improves 66.88 after doing these trades. So I feel like selling and buying more isn't gonna help me very much. Um, what I need is more profit, but, oh, invest for Mo contains. Did I spell it wrong? Do I need to not have a capital? There I am. Okay, so I've gone up some. I'm at 69.26 now. Relative profit went up some. I don't know. That might, did that go down? I can't remember. My volume's at 99. My diversity's at 99. I don't know how to get these higher. So it's almost like, what's the point of selling more if they aren't good profits? And those are weird numbers again. Uh, relative profit score calculates the relative value between the sale price in the 30 day moving average of sales prices in that property's neighborhood. That's kind of tricky. So you have to, that, that almost is telling me it just cares about the price versus the neighborhood price, which means the people with really, really big properties and expensive properties are going to be, have a high score. And those who don't have expensive properties are going to have a low score. So if that's the case, that seems very un, I don't want to say unfair, but very, um, unfair <laughs> towards people who are selling the cheaper properties and completely skews it towards people with big properties. Um, relative purchase score new calculates the relative value between the purchase price and the 30 day moving average of sales prices in the neighborhood. So is that calculating it based on, um, you're buying it cheaper? This seems, I don't know. So, oh, uh, I'm gonna keep reading this. So it doesn't really give us a whole lot of information. So I guess if you buy really cheap, it helps you. But if you sell really cheap, it can hurt you. It's tricky. So I, I would think the profit that you buy and sell for would be, you know, more important. Well, this says relative buy and that says relative profit. So, but that's just based on the profit from the neighborhood and, um, the buy there. So my profit is low, probably because most of my properties are at the low end of neighborhoods because that's what sells more and easier. But my relative buy is better, but still that's uh, a little tricky. So I guess we'll see how I do. Oh, here, one last thing. I'm at 69.26. Let's see if I rank. It doesn't look good. 
so yeah, so I am way down there. And I guess the only way to improve that is to sell expensive properties in neighborhoods. I don't know. That's tricky. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Real quick. Sorry, sorry. I know I do this all the time. But first off, we're here in Detroit. Henry Ford Lazy Note is doing amazing. I keep buying properties here when I see stuff pop up. Our floor is still right about 22000 if you exclude a tiny property. Um, we have lots of builds going on. You can see here, I've got my three in a row right here. There's a fourth right next to me. Um, people, oh, they've got an ornament on their house. How cool. Um, I've got some more properties over here that have been built. Really cool. So I'm really hoping, and maybe I'll limit the next contest to just Henry Ford properties because we've done the, the community build contest on our Discord as well and, and on my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen that, we help every, one person build. We're going to go to that right now. All of them, all three of them has been, have been in Neponset. So here's our other lazy node where we just get together and, and buy properties and have fun. And this is, um, we have our first apartment we're trying to build. And I know there's a little bit of controversy on that, but um, what are they at? 27 days. So still a ways to go, but I know the owner of this property is Ocho1937. They haven't staked all their spark yet. They're trying to finish up another build and they've got three or three and a half more spark to stake. So we should get this build down to half that, I think, maybe less if we get some more people to help contribute to it. And the sooner we do that, the sooner we can finish that and help someone else build again. Um, and I am also building my first um, regular townhouse right here. So I've built small townhouses all over. I started a regular townhouse build. And so that's going to take me a little longer. But um, what do I have? 24 days. Still not crazy amount of time. But um, so I've got that going. So that's kind of cool. So lazy nose are doing good. Um, we have, I know I take longer every time. <laughs> um, 43, still the floor at Neponsent. Neponsent's done really well. The floor was about 30,000 a week, week and a half ago. It's really jumped up and there's really not, I mean, this is with a new city release coming this week when everybody's trying to get liquid, everyone's trying to sell properties. Our lazy node has gone up in value. It's really cool to see. Um, so not to toot my horn too much, but, um, let's see what, uh, Hollis Wood has done. That's another node, um, Radish Head's node. His node has stayed real steady. He's been about 70 at the floor. So his has done well, but then, um, let's see. I know Century City is tough because their floor is so high. Their floor was up over 250. Ooh, now there's one at 194. So see, that's tempting. That makes me want to go buy it, but I'm not going to. I'm saving my money. But you can see a lot of the other nodes will have their floors drop significantly from the new city releases, during the new city releases, because people are trying to liqui li get liquidity. And um, it's really cool to see ours doing well. Okay, now that's all I've got. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Love the comments. Love the shares. Let me know how you did in the release. Let me know what properties, if you're participating in a thrifty challenge, if you have any strategies for selling properties, taking part of that. If you want to do any trades with me, um, hop onto our discord channel. Let me know. We have a channel just for trades and I'll have a link to that below. Thank you for watching. We'll be back with much more coming up here soon.